I'm going to show you the best way to create custom textures for any 3D model that you're working on. And this includes icons like this, logos, special surfaces such as this dotted leather right here, or even custom screens like the ones you can see behind this steering wheel. And all the methods I'm going to show you are completely free. This video is episode 2 of my PaintNet series. If you haven't seen the first episode, go check it out. This video is going to make more sense. This is my favorite image editing software. It's completely free. And in my entire 3D career, I've only ever used this image editing program. You can literally do anything with PaintNet. Let's say you want to create some icons in a car, such as the ones on this Ferrari control panel right here. Sometimes you can go to Google and you can type in car button icons and you're going to find free images of all the classic icons that you can find in most cars. But there are two problems with this that we're gonna fix in this video. The first problem is that you won't find everything this way. For example, I know for a fact that your car or any other common car doesn't have a button for lifting the car floor up or down. And good luck finding this shit on Google. The second problem is that all these icons here are put together and it's hard to arrange them in a specific way so that you can map them to a surface the way you want to. So in this case, we would have to crop them out. So I'll first teach you how you can use these icons right here from Google and change the background colors and change whatever you gotta change. And then I'll show you how to draw your own icons in PaintNet. So open up an image that you like, such as this one right here, or any other image with a halfway decent resolution. Right click, copy image, open up Paint and press Ctrl N. This is going to create a new canvas. And by default, that new canvas is going to copy the dimensions of the image which you have copied to your clipboard. So click OK, press Ctrl V to paste. And now you got your icons right here. Since your buttons are probably going to be black, you want to go up here to adjustments, invert colors. And these are currently gray, so you might also want to go to brightness contrast increase the brightness increase the contrast now you're going to use this rectangle select tool select an icon like this Control c open up a new canvas and the new canvas has to be a little bit bigger than this icon it can be any size so let's just do 512 by 512 delete the background with Control a and delete then press Control v to paste this onto a new canvas and let's say that next to this button we want to have another button perhaps we want this one right here so i'm going to copy this with Control c paste it right here and place it next to this other icon now i'm going to add a new layer with this button place that below this layer select everything with Control a give me my bucket tool give me a black color down here paint the background black and now you can merge these layers down now you have this image you can save that and use it in blender but as you can see these images here are kind of shitty the resolution is low and we definitely don't got this car up and down shit so i'm going to teach you how to create custom icons like this I'm going to start a new canvas let's do 1024 by 1024 delete the background and I'm going to use pure ref to load a reference. I took a screenshot of this button and I'm going to keep that right here. So here's how you draw your own icons. First of all, we're going to use our line tool, pick a white color, increase the brush size. Then I'm going to click and drag to create a line and I'll hold shift to make it straight. Given the thickness that we have for this line, I think it's supposed to be approximately this long. Then with control and scroll, we're going to zoom in on this part right here. And by the way, you can pan your view with the middle click, just like in Blender. You can scroll to move up and down and shift scroll to move left and right then again you're going to shift and click on this area over here we're going to add a line which goes straight up after you create this line you can change its position using this little box down here and this is going to be the back of the car now we're going to create another line starting back here we're going to bring that until somewhere around here this is going to be the beginning of the hood of the car right here and then we're going to use these control points to change the shape of this line that's supposed to give us the back of the car and the windshield we can probably move this a little bit more forward something like this should do and we're also going to adjust this control point in the back so that we don't have a sharp corner like this but everything will flow smoothly once you got this part under control we're going to add another line over here we can bring that to down here and i think our car is going to have to be a little bit longer so let's bring it to over here and we're going to extend this in a second but first let's use these control points to shape the hood something like this will do now we can just add another line over here and extend that to the front and then we can use our brush tool adjust the brush size and adjust the hardness we can use that to fill in this part at the front here now we got to make the wheels so we're going to use our rectangle select tool to clear a few areas down here for the wheels and when we're doing this pay attention to these numbers down here in the bottom left corner this shows you the dimensions of your selected area the reason we're going to pay attention to this is so that we make the same size for both wheels so we're going to select an area in the front here which is going to be 90 pixels 
clear that and then we're going to do another one back here which is also going to be 90 pixels as you can see right here delete that i know my shape looks kind of weird but fuck it you understand the point give me my line tool back or maybe it's going to be better if we use a circle tool so pick this shape shit down here set the shape to circle we got to make sure we have the same brush size as we had before we had a size 9 that way the circle is going to have the same thickness as these lines add a new layer shift click and drag to create a new circle it's got to be bigger than this hole something like this now on that new layer you can use your rectangle select tool copy this circle control c control v and then hold control and use the right arrow to move this to the side like this you're going to place that over the other hole now use your rectangle select tool select everything above the line on this layer while you're clicking and dragging you can use control scroll to zoom in on the area where your cursor is select everything above the line delete now you can merge these two layers like this you can also press control shift f to merge them and now you got your wheels next we need the arrows give me my line tool shift click to create a line like this then go up here and click on this button two times that's going to give you an arrow pointing up then also click on this back side right here three times to make a round end now also make an arrow pointing downward like this you can bring it up here to make sure they have the same size you can even start it up here to be exact once you make it we're going to drag it down like this and now you got your arrows you can always use your bucket tool set the tolerance to something like 28 then hold down shift and click on any of the white areas that's going to make your icon thicker you can also go to effects blurs gaussian blur and that can change the look of the icon in case it's pixelated you can fix that now add a new layer place it below the icon use your bucket tool give me black paint the background black flatten this image and you can save that and use it in blender you can use this method to create any icon any logo any piece of text that you want to put on your model it's all the same shit while we're at it let me show you another trick just because i'm so generous i'll show you how to do an outline for this text or for this icon we're gonna undo a few steps so that we don't have this background and i want a black outline for this white icon i'm going to duplicate this layer using this button right here select the lower layer buckets tool black color shift click increase the tolerance a little bit and do this shift click a couple of times until you get an outline around your icon if you want to you can also blur this to make it look like a shadow and you can even move this to the side by selecting everything with Control a on this layer Control x and Control v to paste it back and now you can use your arrows to move this down or move it to the side and now it's going to look like there's a shadow behind this if you're placing your shadow far away you might want to make this more blurry that's going to make it look a little bit more realistic some of you guys are probably gonna think i'm crazy but i'm not fucking with you i've designed book covers with this program i've textured literally every single artwork in my portfolio with this program i've done projects worth thousands of dollars and i've built my entire youtube channel from scratch just using this simple fucking program so don't even think about coming at me telling me that there's a better alternative because i do not care i will never stop using this program in the next episode of this series i'm going to teach you how to make normal maps from your custom textures and how you can create all kinds of texture maps which are going to create stunning detail on your models just using paintnet this series is based on a chapter in my ebook which i'm about to release in the upcoming update so if you want to learn more about what i showed you in this video check that out the link is below but if you don't want to buy nothing then at least like the damn video subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next episode